it's uh, been quite some time since I've said those words to an audience out there, but it's David Schmall coming at you from Las Vegas, Nevada, here with The Game Changer. We've got an exciting show for you this week. You know, a lot of people have been asking me online in uh, social media, you know, what is this going to be exactly? And when I was first approached to do the show, um, I really wanted to focus on bringing value to people in their life. Your time is important. So when you give me 30 minutes of your time throughout the day or the evening, I want to make sure that we really give you something that inspires you, that motivates you, and that educates you. And that's really what the Game Changer is all about. Having people that can do those things and, and bring that value to you while you watch the show was something that was really important to me. And so I've been fighting laryngitis for the last few days, if you can't tell. I promise you the next time we film, uh, that will not be a problem. Uh, but with the weather and the ups and downs and everybody passing around illnesses with handshakes, uh, it's been a little difficult not to get it, and I've been fighting it off. So I am a little hoarse today, I apologize, but we've got an incredible 30 minutes lined up for you, and I've got an amazing guest here with me, um, an individual that I am proud to have as the first guest for The Game Changer, Mr. Rodney Allgood. Rodney and I have been friends for a very long time. We met um, just over 10 years ago working for another company, and when I thought of somebody that could really embody what Game Changer is, it was really him because of what he does and how he does it. Rodney is a, a personal development coach, he's a motivator, he's an inspirer, he's a leader, he's a successful entrepreneur, and I could go on and on and on, and I'm going to let him share his story with you here in just a little bit. But when it really comes to reaching an audience and bringing something that does inspire, motivate, and educate, I could not have thought of anybody better than him to kind of kick this off with us here with The Game Changer. So it is truly a pleasure and an honor. I appreciate his time today coming into the show. So, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Rodney Algood. Dave, such kind words. Ah, thank, thank you, brother. You. I appreciate it. Glad to be here. It's great to have you here. Thanks for taking the time out of your schedule to join us. And, uh, you know, why don't you give people a little bit of your background? You have such a great story to share. It's such a powerful testimony um, from the business side of things and the personal side of things that I think will really resonate with the audience that we have. So why don't you give them a little history about yourself? Well, I first became an entrepreneur back in 1990. I was 22 years old. And I had uh, $600 to my name. I was newly married. I'd been married about three months. And uh, with $600, I, I was living uh, in Honolulu, in Hawaii. And I moved to the island of Maui and I started a business pumping grease traps out of restaurants. And uh, Maui was just kind of growing at the time. And uh, it, what we did is we went over. In fact, I, when I first went to Maui, I didn't have a truck. I didn't have a business. I got a P.O. box. And I got an answering service. And I took my roommate. And we left flyers at every restaurant in town, right? And when they would call, it would go to the answering service, and I, it was probably March. And I said, well, we can't get you on the schedule to August, because I didn't have a truck. <laughs> so we had all this clientele coming and, and bought, you know, built the business in reverse. You know? So uh, at the time, it was growing. Uh, Maui was, was uh, just uh, growing by leaps and bounds, and the restaurants and hotels came. And we, we ended up turning that to a pretty nice-sized business over 20 years. So we ended up with bigger pump trucks and pump septic systems and all kinds of stuff. But that, that was my start into uh, my entrepreneurial life. But uh, as, as life goes, if you live long enough, you either face financial challenges, uh, breakup of relationships, death, illness, something will get you. And that happened for me at 41 years old. I pretty much lost everything and uh, had to retool. Uh, sometimes it's better to just knock the building down and build brick by brick again and uh, became a motivational speaker and you know just reincarnated myself and for a lot of you out there you, you, you're gonna go through that in life and it's it's really it's really the belief system that you have up here that what, what you'll find in life is what you think up here what you allow yourself to believe what you allow yourself talk to become your life will reflect and uh, I don't regret anything that I've gone through in life because I wouldn't know what I know today. And I know this is the truth, that for any of you who have dreams or have things that you want to accomplish, when you get knocked down, um, it's what you allow yourself to believe. You can't let that self-talk become negative. And uh, here I am today with a totally different life and loving it. Excellent. Well, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And, you know, I think back to when we first met, we were building 
a business that was global, right? We had a reach into all these different countries all the way across the world. And, you know, one of the things that you shared with myself and the other leaders of the, the teams that were out there with the company um, was that in order for anybody to really be successful, and this is a lesson that everybody really needs to listen up to and hone in on, in order for anybody to really be successful, they have to first be successful with themselves right. before they can ever be successful, whether it's working a job, owning a business, whatever the case may be, they really have to be successful with themselves. And as I listened to you talk and I got to know you better, I just thought, man, this guy has such an incredible outlook on how people can really make it happen for themselves. And as I noticed more and more people were listening, I thought, man, you know, everybody really needs to have this kind of information. So what I really wanted to do today was spend some time in talking about how people can really become the best versions of themselves because without that you will not be successful in anything else it just won't matter so if you're not your best version of yourself personally how can you possibly be a better version or a best version of yourself professionally right we often say that good is the enemy of great because people think well I'm good right I don't I don't need to do anything else I'm good with what I have I'm good with where I'm at but truth of the matter is they've already eliminated themselves from achieving greatness because they're saying, I'm good. So how do we move past that mindset? How do we move from being just good and really becoming the best versions of ourselves? Well, a lot of people define themselves by what they do or, or, or chasing that thing that they think is going to define who they are. But when you become something, when you embody something, you'll attract what reflects the person that you become. And going back to the point that you made a little earlier, is you have to become it yourself. You can't be defined by things outside. You can always lose the things that are outside. But if you become it, if you embody it, if you are bigger than what you do. For instance, uh, one of my heroes growing up was Muhammad Ali. And the thing that made Ali great is that Muhammad Ali the man was bigger than Muhammad Ali the boxer. They actually took his title away for three and a half years. Right? And he didn't mind it. He didn't know if he'd ever fight again because he knew who he was outside of that. Good point. Okay, so someone like that is going to be great at something because it's just who they are. Their belief system is so strong. Who they believe they are, they know they're destined for greatness. And what people don't realize a lot is that you operate to the level of your belief, not the level of your potential. You know, so pass your water bottle there. A little example here. You know, if there's a hole on this water bottle, doesn't matter how big this bottle is, the water will only come to here. So even if you fill it up, the water's going to drain back out. And that's why a lot of people, they attain temporary success, right? But they can't hold on to it because that hole is too low. They will always come back down to what they believe or, you know, what they believe about themselves. So the key is to always fortify yourself, to always fortify your belief, to always be reading, to always be doing things, going to seminars, being around the right people, being around people who believe in themselves, who don't put you down. You see, people right. who are successful have no time to be putting anybody else down. And they inspire you because you saw what they do. And they'll believe in you because they did. The people who say you cannot tell you they cannot or you cannot because they did not. Neither person is talking about you. They're talking right. about themselves. right? So it's really important to be around the right people because people who believe in themselves will naturally believe in you because they know it can be done. So it's all about your belief. I, I really believe that people are screenwriters. You write the script of your life in your head. And what you write in your head, you step out and you live in real life. Like a Steven Spielberg, or George Lucas, they write big movies, so they live big lives and they create big movies. You know when you go to one of their movies, it's gonna be a grand event because they write big movies, so a big movie gets produced. The same with our lives. If we write a big movie up here, and we really believe it, then we get a chance to live that. And the enemy of your dreams is doubt. And that little shred of doubt is all it takes. And you have a full bottle of water here. And if I drop one tablet of cyanide or strychnine in that water, the whole water becomes poison. So it doesn't take a lot to kill your dreams. Just a little bit of doubt can kill your dreams. So we really got to work to fortify ourselves to become and embody what we want to attract to us. So you bring up some really good points, you, you know, reading first and foremost, kind of laying down a foundation. 
the people you surround yourself with and what that can bring as far as an influence on how you live out your life on a day-to-day -day basis. So we're going to take a real quick break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about some of those foundational skills that can help you really launch yourself into becoming the best version of you. We'll be right back. Something's always going in, right? So, some people live very purposefully and some people don't. So, when you get conscious about how things affect you, then you need to be a gatekeeper of what goes in your mind, especially your subconscious mind. People who are successful are purposeful about the things that matter. What matters? Your mind, your body, your spirit, relationships. There are just a few things that really matter in life. And you've got to be purposeful about those things. Or else it gets dictated by someone else. right? So if you're not purposeful about what goes in your head, then all the junk and all the media and all the, the garbage that's out there, and it's everywhere more than it's ever been before, goes in your head. If you're not conscious about what you eat, then your body will reflect that. right? You didn't watch what you eight and your body looks like it and you feel like it. If you're not conscious about how you exercise, you'll feel like that, you'll look like that. If you're not conscious about whatever you believe in a spiritual sense, then you'll be lost in that arena. Your finances, every part of your life, if you want to be successful, you've got to be conscious about it. And when you think about your mind, growing, whether it's mentally or physically, is natural early on, right? When you're a kid, you go to preschool, then you go to grade school, then you go to middle school, then you go to high school, then you go to college, right? Your body physically grows on its own until you're about 25 or so, right? right. <laughs> and then when the, the natural part of that is done, you've got to be purposeful. Your body will start to go south if you don't purposefully take care of your body. You, you don't have to purposefully know, learn anything after college. Right? You can just settle out and say, this, this is who I am. And a lot of people do that. They say, this is who I am. I've always been this way. They don't grow. So at some point, growth is on purpose. No one forces you to do it. You've got to do it on your own. There's nothing sadder than somebody who's exactly the same person. I know you know people like this. People that you knew them when they were 25, you see them again at 50, and they're the exact same person, just older. They're saying the same thing. Sometimes I, I, I run into people from high school say, you know, living here in Vegas, uh, there's always people coming out. Know, I'm from Hawaii, so there's always people coming out uh, for the weekend. And every other weekend I'm hanging out with somebody from you know, my past. But sometimes people are exactly the same person they were in high school. Saying the same stuff, talking about the same stuff. And there's nothing sadder to me than that. It's true. That's very true. So 
what can they do? So the audience that we have now who's listening and the people they're going to share this with, how do they start? What, what's a good way for them to really kind of cut out that stuff that you talked about and really start purposefully and intentionally putting back into their minds the value that they need? Well, first of all, I think people believe they don't like to read because they're not reading things that interest them. Okay, so there, there's going to be some part of your personal growth that interests you. Because we're, we're all interested in growth. So find something you dig, find something you like, and make it a routine. Make it part of your morning routine. I have, I have morning success rituals that I do every morning. And it's not that you got to do a lot of it. Some people are intimidated thinking they've got to read half a book every day. No, right. just be consistent. If you do something that's, uh, you know, you can take a smaller portion of something, but as long as you're consistent about it, it's going to really, really change your life. I'll give you an example. When I go to the gym, I'm there for 25 minutes. That's it. But I've been doing that for years. So I am exactly the same size that I was 25 years ago. Right? But I'm consistent about that 25 minutes. Reading's the same way. Just read a chapter. Read a chapter and a half. Read two chapters. Whatever's comfortable. Whatever won't affect your life in a way that you could easily... Um, you know, sometimes when you go too hard on something, something changes in your life and doesn't fit. Right. You know, but if you're consistent and you do smaller bites, you, if you like it, you'll do more. So for the, the person who's out there watching right now and they say, you know what, i got to do that. i got to really do exactly what he's talking about. What would you recommend? What's a, a good few books that you would recommend for them to start that can really help them kind of reshape and reform? And we're going to talk about the circle of influence and the people around you here in the next um, segment before we go to break, but where would you point them to start with a few books that they could dive into? I think every successful person has, has read Think and Grow Rich. Napoleon Hill, absolutely. <laughs> Napoleon Hill, that, that's a fantastic book um, because it really shows you the power of your mind and power of focus. Um, there, there are so many books, there are so many quick reads. Um, I'm trying to think of something that's a nice, easy read. The Four Agreements. Start with that. It's a very simple, quick read book, but the principles are so powerful. They are. Start with that and keep, you know, keep around that realm. Keep finding books like that that just teach you life principles. Because there is something called universal law. And when you obey the universal law, it doesn't matter whatever else you believe, these things are true. You jump off a building, gravity will take you down. But there's other laws just as applicable as that that you need to have in your, your, your toolkit. You, you need to know how to apply these things uh, so life is not so complicated. I think people complicate life. We do. We absolutely do. Yeah. I agree. You're going to take down a tree, you don't pull off every leaf. Right. You <laughs> cut it at the base so you kill the roots, right? You know, and most people do that in life. They pull a leaf, 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 and they get to the other side, and the other side is growing back, right? And that's how you have all this drama in your life. You're addressing it the wrong way. It's not that complicated. You just cut it at the base. So if you have something in your life that is a problem, mind, body, and spirit. I guarantee you, your problems fit in one of those three areas. So when you know, and I always advise people of this, give yourself a score of one to 10 on those three subjects, mind, body, and spirit. You know, Your mind, what are you doing every day so that you're a bigger, better, more competent person than you were yesterday? What are you doing every day to make that happen? Give yourself a score from one to 10. Um, your body, what are you doing every day to take care of your body? Give yourself a score of one to 10. Your spirituality, whatever you deem spirituality to be, what are you doing every day to make sure that deepens? Give yourself a score of 1 to 10. If you're, if you're falling under a 7 on any of those, you know where you need to put the work. Yeah, absolutely. It's a good point. So a couple of great reads for you to pick up um, that are, are widely, readily available, either uh, in the bookstore, you can order them on Amazon, have them drop shipped, whatever service you use. And when we come back here in just a few minutes, we're going to start talking about the circle of influence around you, those people. Um, as the, the old adage goes, you're the product of the five closest people to you, right? And so we're going to dive into that with Rodney, and we'll be back in just a bit.